Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to today's video. Today I have a little plant haul for you. There's not a ton of plants in this but there is actually a really good mixture and I think every single plant on here I've never had on the channel. I know that sounds like oh okay but it's actually quite hard to do nowadays because I don't I'm not actually sure how many plants I've had on this channel over the last three years but I always surprise myself when I manage to find new things. Some of these undoubtedly you may know of. I think there's definitely some that I've mentioned on this channel before. They're all down here, that's why I keep looking down. But I think let's just get started. The one thing I haven't done is grab an outer pot so I cannot drip water on myself, so give me one moment. So, kicking things off with the first plant, I have mentioned this before, I've mentioned this in a rare plant index, and I don't know what I actually said about it. Now, looking at it in person before I show you, I'm reasonably happy with it. The only thing I will say is, I don't know how much different this is from something a little bit more regular that you can get, and you know me on this channel, I always like to be honest. But I will show you it anyway, because it is a nice plant, it's just, I don't know, maybe I'm slightly underwhelmed, I think. Yeah, I think that's fair to say, to be honest. Don't hate it, just I'm not obsessed with it. So the first plant I'd like to show you, really kicking it off in amazing style, of course. This is Skindapsis Tattoo, I do believe. Hopefully you can see it. I'm going to waste no time, get straight in with it. Hopefully it will focus. Right, so the difference from this to another regular silver old platinum or anything else or any other kind of skin dapsis that is silver is this really weird, sometimes it almost looks like a checker mark pattern from a distance. It just got, it's just got this really weird brickwork blocky kind of pattern on it. And that's kind of what makes it different from everything else. I wonder if I've got a platinum to show you alongside it, just so you can actually see the difference between something, I suppose, because the only other skin dapsis that I've got that I can show you that's even remotely similar. So I'll show you that together and hopefully it will actually focus on both. It would be a real shame if it didn't. Can you see the difference there? So that the same tone, obviously this one is just solid. This is skin dapsis platinum here, but this here, as you might be able to tell, in contrast to this one, you should say there, it's quite bricky and blocky. Now, I know what you may be thinking. You may be thinking, hey, Kaylee, this is a lot like Skin Dapsis. I've got one on the wall. That's why I'm looking up. Silver Anne. I think that's the most silver Skin Dapsis you can get, apart from solid silver, that is. I don't think you're a million miles out looking from it on the wall, and I really do wish I could get some to show you. But the Skin Dapsis Silver Anne, I'll probably try and put a picture in for you and describe what I'm looking at. There's a lot of silver down the center of the leaf. It's very, very dark, and you do have some soft of patches at the edge. Now bear in mind I'm describing this plant to you from about five meters away because it's stuck to a wall. So that's kind of what I can see from here. That's basically what it looks like. So if you see here these weird little brickwork patches, if I just put that right up to the camera, you can see what it looks like. And as I held up before the, the platinum next to it, you can see it's still on a silver tone from there. Oopsie, that's lecker. It's just got this really subtle pattern, to be honest. It is very interesting. It just depends on whether you care or not. Yeah, that's Skin Dapsis Tattoo. It's not that I'm completely underwhelmed. It's just, well, it's another silver Skin Dapsis. And I just think, unless you're really into it and you're really collecting, you probably only need one. I think that would be fair to say. So you can either go for the really affordable one, which is the Silver Anne. You can go for the Platinum. You can go for this. There's a few other ones you can go for as well, don't get me wrong. If you're interested in different types of skin dapsis, then I do have a skin dapsis rare plant index, which is basically a video in which I take you through plants that are uncommon to extremely rare. And I'll tell you a little bit about them. I'll tell you about my opinion on them more than anything, really, what I think of them. So if you want to just see a load of skin dapsis with pictures, that's a great place to go. And there's loads of silver ones in there. Okay, the next plant is also something I've not had in on this channel. It's pretty cute, but I'm not enamored. Again, I'm just not enamored. I don't know. It's just, there's a lot of things like this out there. I think you've got to really be a fan. Maybe I'm judging it too much because it's juvenile. I don't know. The next plant I'd like to show you is what I believe to be, what was sold to me as Raphidophora elliptica or ellipticum. I think it's elliptica variegated. I won't sugarcoat it. You've got a vining variegated plant, basically. I'll show you this close up so you can see it like so. It is very cute. Don't get me wrong. It's just, I don't know. How, how many things have we seen like this? How many things have we seen like this? And I think what it is, is in a moment, I'm going to show you something else that I've got that's variegated and it just kicks nuts out of this. So that's probably why. But this is not really rubbery. It's definitely a thicker leaf, I would say. It's quite waxy. It's quite tough looking. Don't know how tough it's actually going to be. There's a lot of variegation in this though, so I'm going to have to be careful and get the stem there. Can you see how much variegation there is in that? 
Mm, not ideal, not ideal. We might have a bit of a a bit of a time with this one. If you can't already tell, I didn't order this. <laughs> can you tell? I did not order this. You can guess who did order this. And it's not. I don't know. What do you honestly, honestly? We keep it honest on this channel, guys. What do you think of it? Do you look at this and think, oh my goodness, that is the best thing ever? Or do you just look at it and go, Kaylee, it's another variegated thing. Do you know what I'm saying? It's another variegated thing. It's another variegated thing. So for me, I'm sure it's lovely, but it doesn't really flow to my boat. There is another Raffidophora in this haul today that honestly, it's the tits. So that's probably why it's taking sort of priority, priority preference over this one. So I will show you it to you one last time. Raffidophora elliptica, variegated, I think. It's pretty plain, don't get me wrong. It's just by the time you've seen loads of epipremnum and other things like that, and even skinned apsis looking like this, it all sort of just melds into one. So I'm going to pop this down and we'll pick up something a bit more fun. Because Ben also bought something else, guys. And I'm not really sure why he did it. I think it's becoming a meme on this channel at this point because you all know my opinion on begonia. Now, I don't hate them. I could like them. The begonia I tend to like do tend to be the more angel wing variety. And this ain't it. This looks a little bit more like a... Don't offend y'all, the are begonia fans, but it looks a little bit more like a garden variety to me. And I just, I just don't care for stuff like that. You know that on this channel. So I'm not exactly sure what this is. Did he tell me? Have I written it down? Literally, you're going to have to ID this one, guys. So begonia fans, get ready for this random variegated begonia. Obviously, I think the trend here is Ben just likes to buy variegated things. What we have here, if I just step closer to the camera, is a variegated begonia. It's not really floppy. It's floppy in its plantation in the pot, but the plant itself isn't really floppy. I mean, this is cool here. I do actually like the way this variegation happens to work here. Can you see that? That is kind of cool. I really don't know what this variety is, but that's the shape of the leaves anyway. And I think this... Smaller leaf here might be the newest, so that's really fun. These are obviously, these two big ones here are the plant that it was cut from. I assume you cut begonia like everything else. It's begonia. <laughs> but I didn't want to not show you because you know what? For every person that doesn't like it, someone's going to appreciate it. So I don't want to not show you things just because I don't like them. It's not really always what it is on this channel. Have a little look once again at the random variegated begonia, which nobody knows what it is. So if you can ID that for me, that would be just swell. Should we get on to some more interesting things now? Because I think those are the things out the way that I don't particularly vibe with. Everything else in this haul, I think is quite interesting. So the next thing I want to show you is, it's not as yellow as I thought it would be, but I want to just see what happens. Now I have an adult plant of this plant, but I can't really pick it up because honestly it grows in chaos corner and it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. But the plant itself, therefore, I know is tough because it's growing really nicely in Chaos Corner. And this probably will do the same. I think the newest leaf is all variegated, which is a bit of a shame. I'm going to show you it anyway, and hopefully you'll find it cute. So this plant here, if I could just show it to you, block out my face, is Philodendron Fuzzy Petiole Variegated. So it's kind of a little bit like, I think a lot of people likened it to Philodendron, <laughs> sorry, it's just literally weighing on me. I think a lot of people likened it to Philodendron Nangaratensi at some point, but it's just really cute. And obviously it's so small, it's not, it's not becoming Fuzzy Petiole. I literally can't, I literally can't. Can you see the different variegation there? This I believe is fully variegated, so that's not, it's not amazing. There's some lovely patches on some of the other leaves if I show you it. And we've got a lovely, lovely sectoral chunk here on this leaf. So when you look at this, I appreciate you probably just think it's normal, but you kind of have to see the other leaves here in order to get the point of it. So if I tilt that there, you can probably see. Now, I think that's going to shape up quite pretty, actually. So I'm quite excited about it. Needless to say, that's a long way off. That's a long, long way off. I think if I put it in some of my feed, it might just shoot up. I always like to, in this case, if it's yellow, I sometimes like to cut things and leave things and see if they can actually still survive. They never do, but I always do anyway. So if I cut the top off this, I'm not going to get rid of it. I'll probably just stick it in a pot and wait for it to die. You kind of, it's weird, isn't it, with variegated things? You kind of just need to confirm things to yourself. Even though you know that things are going to die, you still, you, you need to see the death. You can't just throw it out. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, this guy is really, really cute. Really, really cute. I love this leaf here that's half and half. There we go. Hang on. It's so floppy, but not in a bad way. I think it's just young. There we go. How cute is that? So that is Philodendron Fuzzy Petiole Variegated. I'm pretty sure that's just what it's gone by. And I'm pretty sure it's what I've got in my corner. Very, very cute. I think we can agree. 
This next one, I'm not fully confident with the idea of it. Sorry, I'm literally just making sure it's all good in there. I'm not fully confident with the idea of it. However, it is really cute. So if you know something different, feel free to tell me. The next plant I have to show you is variegated, but it's an example of, oh, here's a variegated thing that's a bit different. Here's a variegated thing that actually looks nicer than the other thing. Just, just gonna be honest. So this here is apparently Pothos variegated. I know, that's all I've got. To me, it looks a bit like a Raphidophora, but it probably isn't. But it is very, very pretty. Let me just show you this. What do you think of that? I really want to know what you think of this, because I don't often put things like this on the channel, but I quite like this. Oh, right, okay, I can't really tip it that well. That's annoying. What do you think of that? I quite like that a lot. I think that's a really, really pretty plant. It's not quite shingly, but it does really weird stuff with the leaf when it comes off the main vine. Can you see what I'm talking about? That there alone will probably allow you to ID it, I would think. So it's just me hiding behind it. It's really difficult to actually show you this because the moss falls forward. So I'll do my best there to show you it. I realize that we're getting a little bit of focusing issue. That is really, really tough. I don't know if you can see it through the pot. I cover that. Can you see that through there? So yeah, this is really, really random, but I really like that. I think that's something a little bit different, and I think that could be quite cool. I'll grow it like I'll grow shingler, to be honest. I'll probably get a nice plank or maybe something with moss on it, but not a thin pole, something maybe a bit wider. I think that could be quite nice. Literally, I cannot show you this without it coming forward. There you go. That is the, honestly the best I can do. It will not. It will not allow me to show this plant on camera. But how nice is that? How nice is that? I really like that. Against the other variegated thing, the Raphidophora, this completely wins. So the next plant I want to show you is a new hybrid that I've never had before. And the plant that this, you know, one of the plants is crossed with, one of the parents, I don't know if I've ever even seen before. And that's not to say it's rare. It just happens to be something that I never hear people speak of. So this is quite interesting. And what I can tell you so far is it's actually very tough. I at least know one of the parents that makes this plant. And the fact that it's tough makes a lot of sense because I think that the parent is tough. But this plant here, let me just show you a little bit first. See if you can tell me what plants you see in it before I tell you what it is. So if I just show you the growth pattern, it looks a little bit like this. This is the back of this leaf. It's, uh, it's a little bit dirty. It's not long come in. So that's what that looks like there. Hopefully it will focus instead of on me. So that's what that looks like. There is definitely a colored stem there. There's definitely a little bit of lobage, but not too much. And the whole plant is a little bit chunky. It's not quite like what you may normally be used to seeing. Can you guess what might be in this plant? So what's in this plant is a combo, I don't know which order it is, of Philodendron bilietiae or bilietiae with Philodendron hercules. Now I have no idea as of recording this video what Philodendron hercules looks like. I will insert a picture for you because I'm actually very curious myself. So when I'm talking about this, I can't see the picture you're seeing, so I don't actually know what it looks like. I would imagine, let's take a guess, hopefully not embarrass myself, it's going to be something very, very chunky, something with typically shorter petioles and fat. I think it's going to be quite a fat boy, a bit stumpier, for the leaves, I reckon they're probably a little bit more paddle-shaped rather than obviously elongated because I think what we're seeing here is some of the bilati coloration with the bilati length, but it's not full force. It's sort of like halved. So I'm trying to think of what the other plant is that's bringing it back to this, if that makes any sense. And you could throw away everything I'm saying because you've probably seen the picture and it might look way off, but I imagine that's what it is. I don't know if Hercules has colored stems because honestly, what I'm seeing here is pink. It's not orange. I don't know if that's going to come off on camera. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's pink. It's like a rhubarb pink color. It's definitely not orange. And the newest leaf here is actually green. So very, very curious as to what that means for this plant. You can absolutely see the bilati. I totally get that. But I think the plant underneath is more of a, just more of a bird's nesty paddle type. Now, obviously this is going to be a climber. I have no doubts about that, but it really interests me. So I'm not saying it's a new plant on the market, but it's definitely new and not something I've seen anyone really put out. So I guess in that sense, it's new, if that makes any sense. So this is Philodendron bilitae crossed with Philodendron hercules. What do you think? Let me know. 
This is what it's like when it's getting a little bit more mature, so more of that length is coming in. And that's what he looks like, that's him. I think he's quite cute. I'd love to see a bigger one, to be honest, but I don't know how common they are. I don't know if I can hold this up without a fuss. Right, I'm gonna have to put it in something really stupid and it will look stupid when I hold it up, okay? But we're just gonna have to deal with it because I don't have a pot big enough. So the next plant kind of interests me and I've talked about this sort of thing before. I will explain what I mean when I hold it up. But I basically bought this because it looks like something else and it looks like it's gonna size up quicker and it just could be quite interesting. So I this to see how it turns out and it does look pretty cool to be honest i can see a little bit kind of what the name would suggest let's hold it up shall we so this plant here can you see it can you see it we have this leaf here which is really big by the way that's the size of my head there that's the leaf then we have these smaller ones because obviously this has been a one leaf propagation so we have this here with loads of holes can you see oh, just stand a little bit closer for you Loads of holes here, and then another one here. It has got a little bit small, but this is a Monstera. So obviously when you cut things, as is the case with a lot of plants, don't get me wrong, they go very juvenile, so it's going to go back from this. But I thought this was quite impressive, and this is what sold me on the plant, this big leaf. So this here is apparently, apparently, Monstera oblique cascadas, or cascada, I think. The name will be up on the screen. And again, this is just what it's been sold to me as, so if it's wrong, it's wrong. But I really, really liked it. Now, you can tell it's nothing to do with Monstera esqueleto or esqueleto, because these petioles here, can you see how thin they are compared to Monstera esqueleto? This is very, very thin. And to be fair, the ratio of how thin the petiole is to the leaf is quite oblique-esque. Does that make any sense. Now, I actually think this could be quite nice when it's big. I think if you're going to buy something like this and you're going to propagate it, you're going to maybe see really different sizes sold for sale. I can already tell off the bat if you tried to sell baby versions of these, they're not going to sell very well because you can't really see what is going on when they get larger. So when I propagate these, I might try and sell them smaller, but I anticipate that people would not be interested until they reached, you know, something more like this or even maybe something like this, I, I guess. Clearly, this is where it's at. This is what makes it fun. I'll show you a little bit closer because this is cool. It might even be today's thumbnail because I don't know what today's thumbnail is. He's quite nice though. Can you see him? He's very, very large. And as I say, that is my head. So that is Monstera Oblique Cascada. I'll show you the back. The back looks a little bit like that. Hopefully you can see that. I appreciate his focus on me. Give me one moment. I'll try and improve that for you. Can you see that there? Hopefully you can. That is the back of the plant. I don't know how easy this is going to do literally anything. We will see. I might put it on a pole. I would love to see this get really big. Plus propagations would be better if you think about it because people get to see what this actually looks like. So this might be a good one. We will see. We will see. Is it a form of oblique? Your guess is as good as mine. This is just what it's sold to me as. And I'm saying that because the oblique tag on things has been used to death. And I'm not saying people haven't been selling forms of oblique, but you get what I mean. It's a bit of a buzzword still. So we'll see how it goes. But that is apparently Monstera oblique cascada or cascada. The next plant I have to show you is quite beautiful, but it is a total wobbler in the pot. So I'm not going to pick it up just yet. I'm going to describe it to you and I want to make sure it's the right plant as well. So I'm actually going to look it up really quickly, just in terms of appearance, because I want to see how it changes when it gets mature. Ah, right. So it does do something. Yeah, it does. Right. I thought so. This plant here is not a plant I've had in before. It reminds me of a thormatophyllum. And if it turned out to be a thormatter film. I wouldn't be that surprised. And I say this because of the growth pattern and the length of the petioles is just quite thormatter filmy, right? So I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to show you. It's just really wobbly in the pot, so it's a little bit difficult for me to navigate the plant for you. This here is apparently philodendron... William C.I. variegated. And what apparently does happen, and this is why I looked it up, the edges of the plant get a little bit, not full on fingery, I don't think, but they get very, very, very wavy, should we just say? And I think this new leaf here is an example of that. It is all over the place. It is variegated. The petioles are kind of weird, actually. So what you do get at the petiole, and I will try and show you this, the backs of the petiole, the very top of the petiole insertion, at the very top, it's flat. So it's kind of a d-shaped petiole is what i'm alluding to don't know why i didn't just say that in the first place no idea do you see what i'm saying it doesn't really look like philodendron to me that screams thormatophyllum and i know there's a lot of instances where these two plants get confused 
all the time or they get reclassified or whatever. I'm not entirely sure whether it's just confusion or they're reclassified, but I'm going to show you the best I can these plants. So I have to cover my face, otherwise it just, it just won't let you see things in HD. So you will not be able to see the variegation on that, I don't think, but just pay attention to the edges of the leaves. Now, this was shipped like this and it's still sort of unfurling, so this is a little bit touch and go. However, however, you should see this absolutely amazing guy here. How nice is he? He's very, very beautiful. So you can see this really nice wavy, I think we would call it undulating. I do think that is a word. The leaf margin here just goes really nice and wavy. And you've got this lovely yellow variegation, which means you might need to treat it a little bit differently with light because if you don't go bright enough, then the variegation can often come through a bit limey. Now with philodendron that are more on the creamy side, that doesn't need to happen necessarily. Cream is a bit better but I would call that yellow. So that is going to be a thing with the plant. I'll just have to stand like that, guys. I think it's the best way. So that is apparently Philodendron Williamsii variegated, but I just, I really feel like it's not because Philodendron don't tend to grow like this. This is almost growing like an alocasia. If you just have a look here, can you see what I'm talking about there with the way that that comes out of the plant? That is like, it's more like a firework design. It's more kind of like alocasia grow. So I don't think it's philodendron. Just putting it out there. Now I might have already labeled what the plant actually is on the screen. Go with that, argue with that, do whatever you want. That's just kind of what I found out in editing. It is very, very pretty. And I do think that's the newest, that's the second newest. So there should be some good yield. Let me just tell you how much is on this one. Oh, there's a lot, but it's kind of blended across the entire leaf. It's not really a half and half situation. So that's absolutely fine. I will let you know how this goes. Clearly it's going to be propagated a bit differently. So that can't happen very soon because just the way it grows but I will keep you updated on it. And it is a very pretty plant. I wouldn't mind one in my house, if I'm honest. There you go. Thormatophyllum or Philodendron Williamsii variegated. Let's pop him down. I've got a very cool plant for you next. This plant, I have... I think I've called it overrated a lot because I think it is, and I still stand by that. The only time I think these plants are not overrated is if you get a really beautiful specimen. I think that's fair to say. I have this plant to show you. Uh, it's not been on a wish list or anything like that, I don't think. Or maybe it was, but again, I'll have asked for something really extraordinary in terms of variegation. This is not. I think this is average, maybe. Just being honest, you know me. Just being honest. But I've got this in, and I didn't actually know this plant was a climber. And I've just, I guess I've just never bothered to find that out. So I was a bit surprised to learn that this was a climber. But it is a nice plant. I do like it. And I am curious to see how nice I can get propagations of it. And this is something that would probably sell quite nicely in a smaller plant. Because I think people are quite happy to wait with these. But I'll pick it up now. And as soon as I hold it up, a lot of you will probably know what it is anyway. Let me just pick this up. Can you see it? Can you see it? If I hold it like that, can you see what that is? So if you don't know, this is Philodendron Caramel Marble. Is it Caramel Marble Variegated or just Caramel Marble? I'm not sure. I think people kind of use both interchangeably. So the cool thing about this plant, typically speaking, is that when new leaves come in, they come in this bronzy color, because this is a new leaf here. I'll try my best to show it up to the camera and block myself out. You see that there? That's just coming in. So you get this cool bronzy effect. And if I turn it around this way, you can definitely see it. This is where the, the caramel part comes in with this plant. When the leaves harden off, you get something very similar to the last plant, the William CI. You get this sort of color and you do get a cream variegation. So it goes through quite a beautiful transformation. And honestly, I still maintain this. I have a friend with an absolutely gorgeous specimen of this plant and it does look amazing. I guess my thing is it's got to be a really nice specimen. Now there's nothing really wrong with this. It is nice. For some reason on these plants, I appreciate quite a sectoral you know, chunk of variegation like this. This is great. I want more of this because then this would look really cool. But I am very, very curious to see how this develops. And I do like this plant. But as I say, I'm quite surprised to see that it's a climber. I don't know why. I think it's Ring of Fire a climber as well. Because I just feel like you never see them off the ground. You always see them in a little bush. So it's just not something I ever thought about. Do you know what I mean? Because I never bothered to look it up. But that is it there. That's Philodendron Caramel Marble or Caramel Marble Variegate, whichever one it is. That is it. And I am excited to propagate it. It looks like this is propable already. So what I might do is just get cracking on it. 
get cracking on it and propagate this one while the aerials are still good. Sometimes when you bring plants in, they're good for a couple of weeks and the aerials just go pfft. So I might propagate that quite quickly. I will let that harden off and then we'll probably go from there. But it's very, very nice. I do like it. This is beautiful. I hope this can give a good yield. This is obviously the older leaf, so this is the propagation. And the person that sold it obviously isn't the happiest with how this has turned out. Presumably, because they like the same things I do in a caramel marble, presumably they quite like the chunkiness. So we'll see how that goes. But it is very, very pretty. I'll show you this leaf here, like so. Quite a nice thumbnail. I do say so myself. And then a little bit more of the caramel action, just so you can actually see it. It is honestly, guys, I'm not bashing this plant at all. It is a nice plant. I just want to see how the variegation turns out because I think I really prefer it when it's quite chunky. I do love the bronze though. I have a, what is it called? I call it a philodendron cardinal beauty, but it's basically philodendron um, black cardinal mixed with philodendron florida beauty and that is very very beautiful plant and that's very very bronzy so i do appreciate the bronze that is very very nice i love that that's gorgeous so i'll pop them down but i will let you know the progress on this guy and hopefully i'll have some propagations to go to sell moving forward i guess oh this leaf here needs a bit of love as well this is quite nice very, very, very nice. So we have a lot of variegation throughout. It's just not chunky. So let me know what you think about that one. It is nice though. And I, I must say before I put it down, the shape of the leaves, love it. Love the whole sawtooth thing. Love it. I think we have one plant left in this haul. And I dare say, I think it's actually my favorite. We've steadily been moving up on my favorites, I think, but this one really takes it for me because it feels like another plant. And it, I can't quite tell how it's going to grow, but it's really nice. The variegation is the right color. It's the right size. It's the right texture. Seriously, this is good. So I'm going to hold this up and show you it before I tell you what it is, because it's mint, guys. It's just mint. So it's a bit knobbly. This is the plant from a distance. You're probably thinking, ooh, very nice, very nice. I've got some amazing variegation on the back of it, by the way. Spoiler alert, it's variegated. Can you see that? Oof. Oof. Are you ready for me to turn it around? Are you ready? If I turn it around here, can you see how amazing this is? Can you see this? Can you see this? This is how big the plant leaf is, by the way. Now, it reminds me of another plant, and this is why I love this plant so much. So look at this. Oh my goodness, that looks mint. That might have to be a thumbnail as well. I've got a lot of thumbnails going on today. That's nice. So can you see how thick these leaves are? Like, this is thick. This is so similar to another one of my favorite plants. There's another leaf, by the way. A little bit of a stripe stripe there. And there's a gorgeous leaf here. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Can you see that? Obviously, there's a little bit of shipping damage on this, but this plant is solid as a rock. Now, what is it, you may ask? What is this amazing, amazing thing? This is Raphidophora. I think it's Gigantium variegated. This, guys, this is honestly amazing. Now, don't be put off by the random merk. It's obviously been potted in a pot differently to how I have, and it's grown upwards, and it's sort of splayed out like that. But this reminds me so, so, so much of Astralitia reginae. That's not the one that's always in garden centers, not the one with the big paddles. It's the one that is a lot more leathery and the leaves are a little bit cupped and they are smaller. It's, I did haul one on my channel a while ago and it was variegated. It's back there, it's pushing out a new leaf and the leaf is literally amazing. You'll see on Instagram as soon as it's hardened off probably. It reminds me so much of that. The texture, and I did actually go and touch it before I filmed this video to check. The texture is so so, so, so similar to that plant. The only difference between the two is that that plant is tougher, but the texture is the same. So this is just a slightly thinner version of the Strelitzia reginae. Again, not to be confused with the Nicolai. The reginae, by the way, is the one with the really orange flowers. The Nicolai tends to have white flowers. Both gorgeous, but most people, if you're getting a Strelitzia for the flowers, you get it for the orange. But anyway, this is not Strelitzia. This is Raphidophora. And when I was talking earlier on and I said, hey, this Raphidophora, I don't give two hex about it compared to this. This is exactly why, because this is absolutely beautiful. Look at it. Look at it. The back, by the way, is just as impressive. If I can try my best to rotate it, show you the back of the leaf. It's just as impressive. Look at the layers of variegation. We love it, we love it. Again, this leaf here, beautiful, 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 beautiful. The specimen I have as well is excellent. It is excellent because if I propagate from these two, they've got so much variegation going up this petiole. Look at it. 
That is brilliant. I'm gonna have good yield off that, I can already tell. Because the variegation around the petiole as well is dispersed quite well. It's not perfection, but it's quite well. So I think I should have some good luck with it. There's definitely a lot in there because if you look at this petiole as well, there's a lot going on. You see that? That there is all variegation because if I rotate it, you can see the green. I think we're going to have a great yield. Not only that, but the variegation, it does actually differ from the top side of the leaf to the bottom side of the leaf. So you have that on one side and obviously here where we've had a green layer of plant cells on the bottom, you've got a green patch. This, honestly, I love this. I absolutely love this. It does need to be propped up a little bit more because it's not great in the pot. But how nice is this plant? I love that. I'm obsessed with that. And I can't wait to let you know how it goes with propagating it. Because that plant, I can actually genuinely see people having in their house if it grows really nice. I think that's really nice. It's very, very tropical because it gives off the same vibes as Australitia. And I'm sure you can grow up a pole or whatever you want to do. I'm very, very, very curious about that plant. And I'm also very curious about it when it's young as well. So when I cut it, I'm not even worried about that one getting smaller because to be quite honest, it's got a long way to go to get smaller. Probably the clues in the name, Gigantium. But I'm really, really excited about that. And that is definitely my favorite plant in the whole hall. Closely followed by, honestly, maybe the caramel marble and then maybe the oblique. I think it's been quite a good haul. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the content. Let me know if I've got that begonia ID. Well, I didn't even give you an ID for that, but let me know if I've got other IDs for other plants. Correct? Incorrect? Let me know. Hopefully that other plant is indeed a format of film and I'm not looking stupid on the internet right now. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, then feel free to hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching this haul, guys. I've very much enjoyed myself today. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.